What's your most money-consuming hobby? Story one, horses. I've had my horse for 17 years, and financially, I gave it pretty much all I got. He recently passed away, and although my heart is broken, I am incredibly aware of how much money I'm saving now that I do not own a horse anymore. Story two, cheese. No, really. I spend way too much on cheese. Fancy cheese from a fancy store. Soft and hard. The kinds of cheese that normal people are like, why is that wedge of cheese so expensive? It's not even for a gathering for people to share. It's just for me. I get nice crackers and hot honey and salami and olives and all the charcuterie board stuff. But it's not for a get-together. It's just for me. And I absolutely do not regret a single second or dollar spent on these cheeses. I really just like a good cheese. Story 3. Rereading. Editing this to say, I put this down because it's my most expensive hobby. I really don't spend more than like $50 a year on it. And all my books are secondhand. It's just the only hobby I really spend money on. Most of the books I buy are pretty beat up and cheap and not valuable for a collection at all. I do know about every single resource for reading that you guys put down in the comments, including the library, El Mao. I use the Libby app for audio and digital books. I prefer my own physical copy books, though, because I underline, highlight, and write in the margins. Story 4. Sewing maybe at some point it could start paying itself, but the initial investment is quite big. Sewing machine, overlocker, all the accessories, fabrics, needles, threads, patterns, and of course the classes. Not only money-consuming, but also very time-consuming to make my first tank top cost me maybe a few hundred, machine included, and took me hours to make. Then there are similar ones on Zara for 8 euros. It has definitely made me question the fast fashion industry and made me realize how much work goes on a piece of clothing. Story 5. Buying everything needed for a saltwater aquarium and the best quality stuff including massive aquariums and not being bothered starting it. Now most of the things for it are expired and the tank just stands in the living room with no fish or water. Also radio control plane hobby. ADHD is expensive. Story 6. Staying alive. But the real answer is movies. Physical movies. I have a small movie collection of something around 500 films. It probably won't grow any bigger unless some old DVDs and VHS suddenly become 4K releases. Or something I like comes out brand new. Story 7 Guns. The guns are expensive. My collection is valued somewhat over $55,000 based on what I paid. My last pistol cost almost $8,000. The accessories for the guns are expensive. The optics red dot sights. Pretty much all of my guns have optics. So my optic collection is over $1.10K. Ammo is expensive, about 30 cents a bullet for 9mm range ammo. If you want quality match ammo or self-defense ammo, that costs more. Rifle ammo also costs more. Safes and cases are also expensive. Story 8. My most money-consuming hobby is definitely photography. Between investing in high-quality cameras, lenses, and other gear, as well as spending on workshops, editing software, and even travel for shoots, it can really add up. But for me, the joy of capturing beautiful moments and continually improving my skills makes it worth the investment. It's a hobby that blends creativity with technology, and seeing the results of your work can be incredibly rewarding despite the costs. What about you? Story 9 Aviation. Skydiving is up there. Teams will put in 150 k to train for a season for the world championships. Remortgaging houses, etc. Standard jumper, repacks and 200 jumps yearly is tilde 7 k Add traveling new gear, boogies, tunnel plus 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 comfortably 15 k annually. Wouldn't change a thing. Story 10. My house purchased as a rehab so it's a long-term project and worth the time and expense. Next in sheer cost are my fish. It's easy to get carried away both in number of tanks and cost overall. There's always just one more fish tank accessory upgrade and I swear I'll stop. It can be a social hobby, trading, meeting, social media, and just watching them has documented health benefits, but it can get out of hand pretty quickly. Story 11 Model Trains I collect 1920s to 1960s Hornby mostly but I also dabble in Lionel and other vintage items, clockwork and electric. I don't have a big setup to run them on, but I am a member of a club and help to put on shows, so my collection does get to go out and be seen by the public. Story 12 depends. I've probably spent more on knitting and crochet supplies over the years, but I also collect fossils, which obviously can be expensive if you're buying high-quality rare specimens. Only got into that within the last year or two, so haven't got a huge collection, but have spent quite a lot on a couple. Story 13, collecting anime figure. My mom thinks it's cute, but she doesn't understand it and why some figures cost over 100 or 200 compared to some who cost 20, like, you know, quality and details. But anyway, also, why you need more? Because, well, in fact, I'm trying to own a lot of things about my favorite worlds and universe, but they keep releasing new things. Every times, you know, new Pokemon stuff, 
New Kirby stuff. Yu-Gi-Oh! Zelda Persona Dragon Quest Kingdom Hearts. There are so many things I like and I own which makes me feel better with my depression. I create this whole relaxing apartment with all my belongings and I like staring at them. But it's okay as long as I can manage my money correctly. Story 14. I collect handbags. No idea why. I'm not typically one for fancy things and I don't buy huge logos or anything flashy for status. I love the quality leathers, the designs, the rich colors, and I'm a real nerd for it, but the hardware, I'm a sucker for strong and quality hardware. I have two brands specifically I'm into and love to read about their history and heritage. I always do secondhand because I like having them broken in with some life in them. I also love them because they inspire confidence but can dress any outfit up. They are each their own mood. Bags always fit and wearing them feels like I have my shit together. I get bad depression, and sometimes I just go out to random places because I want somewhere to wear my bags. I think people would actually be really surprised to learn this about me, but I don't talk about my bags or where they came from slash designer. They're just for me. I recently got a new work bag, a Mulberry Rock set in Oat. They were discontinued approximately 2016, I think, for basically brand new at a pretty low price, $250, retailed for $1,600, I think. I absolutely love it. I put an organizer in it, and now I want to have meetings to take it to, even though work has been shitty lately. Story 15. Dancing. If you just want to dance locally, it's not too expensive. But if you want to get better, you'll need to take lessons. Group lessons are cheaper, but private lessons are better and more expensive. Then going to dance conventions, where you will excel in learning and meet many people and dancers, can get very expensive. Plane ticket, hotel, rental car, convention ticket. Story 16. Model Railways, UK, used to be mega fun and somewhat affordable. Now, if it's not available on a pay and X plan, it's unattainable for most modelers. Because of this, it's killed the hobby for the younger generations, meaning there's a good chance it'll eventually die out. Even the secondhand market is through the roof. Not helped by big manufacturers justifying 300 pounds for one model train with no sound. Story 17. Anime Manga, my partner and I collect manga volumes and anime figures. And it gets expensive quick. We started with prize figures, which are $1.2035 USD each, then started working our way up to more expensive figures. And now we mainly only buy scale figure, which are much more expensive, at upwards of $1.150 plus. We live in the U.S., so you can either buy them for inflated prices on American sites. You can import them directly from Japan, which is much cheaper, but then you usually end up paying $1.40 plus just in shipping. So sometimes it's worth it, while other times it ends up being the exact same price. Buying used figures is always an option but you always have to be on the lookout for fakes. We get most of our brand new figures on Big Bad Toy Store and have gotten a decent amount of used figures on Mercari. When buying from Japan, we use Mandaraki. Story 18. Having ADHD that picks up a new hobby and has to have all the best bits to make the hobby worthwhile straight away. That one. Currently gardening. Just lost the rush of baking. Before that was watercolor and crochet and starting a degree I have no interest in finishing anymore, but I will, but I have no motivation, eh? Story 20. Audio equipment. Hi-fi, not in cars. It's literally the most needless thing in life, and after a certain price point, it's all extremely small margins for exponentially higher prices. But I love it. I love stereo audio and home theater. Got a system that combines the two. You're always tweaking the system to your liking, and it's fun to change or add stuff over time. You'll never have the perfect system, and it depends heavily on the rooms you have available. It's a fun but expensive hobby. Story 21. Fishing. You can have basic fishing rod and few lures for $200, or you can have fishing gear and lures for $15,000 in a boat starting from 5 k to 250 k There's no limit. I'm not going to count how much I spend on fishing because I want to sleep tonight. Buying fish is much cheaper, but I'm not doing it for fish. It's an addiction. Story 22. I pay a lot of money on games. My backlog has more chapters than an encyclopedia. I also have an unhealthy habit of spending money on Pokemon cards. I'm currently collecting Charizards, and these cards are expensive. Just dropped 400 plus the other day on two cards. I have to stop. Story 23, I collect Amiibo, Nintendo NFC figurines. They're not as bad as something like Funko Pops, as Nintendo only makes new ones every once in a while. But Amiibo tend to skyrocket in value over time, especially if they aren't reprinted frequently, slash, are exclusive to certain things region, bundles, etc. This means pretty much all of them that aren't sold currently on Nintendo's WEN site or in the few stores that still sell them are at the least a bit over MSRP, like maybe $30 versus the initial $16, if not far higher, especially over time. That adds up after a while, but 
I make sure to space out purchases somewhat. For the most drastic examples, look up amiibo like QBB, One-Eyed Rathalos and Ryder, Girl, Yarn Poochie, Navaru, Gold Mega Man, Metroid, Big Yarn Yoshi, etc. I don't own any of these currently, but if I want to collect them all, I would have to. I did choose to ignore the amiibo cards and wristbands at least, although I did get the cereal box because I thought it was funny. Story 24. Shopping. No, wait. Crafts. Jewelry making, cross-stitching, latch hooking, scrapbooking, junk journaling, origami, coloring, card making, crocheting, etc. No, wait. Reading. No, wait. Gardening, yard updating. No, wait. Home ownership. Story 25 dogs. Okay, not quite as bad as horses, but get into dog sport and you too can be broke while also driving a dollar 120 k RV for dogs who have specific collars for each sport they compete in. Come along on a journey of eating ramen while also buying a crash-proof car crate, a hotel crate, a show site crate, and four more crates for home just in case. Story 26. All of them. I have ADHD, so collecting hobbies is basically my hobby. That in itself tends to get expensive. For example, I recently got into 3D printing. A fairly basic starter setup was $300 for the printer, and I've spent about $150 more in filament and a few small tools. But of the hobbies I've collected and stuck with long term, the ones that have been the most expensive are gambling, poker, daily fantasy sports, and sports betting mostly, for obvious reasons, and woodworking. Woodworking tools are expensive, but the material is also expensive. I'm currently building a coffee table that even getting most materials from Facebook Marketplace has probably been around $500 in raw materials. Though I'm building a version of a coffee table that retails for $1,600, so I'm still saving money. That's what I tell myself, at least. Story 27 Quilting Also, people think sewing is cheap. One of my machines was $24,000 alone. I have several and use them all. Material on average is $1.1216 a yard, so... If it takes eight yards of material, plus thread, cotton batting, special cutting devices, scissors, needles, rulers, loads of time, machine maintenance every three, six months, each quilt is worth at least $500 or more dollars, giving me no money for the time I spent. That said, I do it for me because I love it. I listen to murder podcasts and relax while making quilts. Story 28, Collecting Vinyl Records. It started out super innocent after my roommate gave me her old record player, and I just bought from like resell stores. But a couple days ago, I caught myself saying, well, I guess $125 isn't that bad for a limited edition press. It's a very efficient way to waste money. And boy, does it make me happy. Story 29, Ballroom Dancing. Lessons about $400 per month, shoes. I have three pairs and my husband has two. That is about $1,000 in shoes. Dresses range from $2,000 to $9,000, so I make my own at about $500 with machines, fabric, and Swarovski crystals. Going to a competition and not even competing in all our classes is like $6,000. I don't even know how much my husband's clothes are, but it's more than you'd expect. Story 30. I spend way too much money on going on vacation. The biggest money suck is Disney. I love going there several times a year, and it is so damn expensive. I told myself, I'm only going once this year. I love going on trips. I feel so relieved on them to be away from work and the real world. Story 31. Firearms, everything involved in this sport seemed to get very expensive in the last four years. A lot of people I know got really into shooting during COVID since it's a place we could go that was outside and no mask rules, basically. Now it seems no one can afford to shoot as much. I also had a kid, so that cuts back the funds available by a bit LOL. Story 32. Exercising. Pilates, weight training, and spin to be exact. In a fairer world, it would be universally accessible, but alas, asterisk. Just to preempt a common comment, yes, I'm aware walking and running outside is free. I obviously do those too, but it's not a replacement for the other stuff. And the boutique fitness classes are much more obviously a frivolous hobby due to the expense, albeit one that serves an important purpose for me. Story 33 flashlights and it's not even close. I shudder to even think about adding up all of the lights and parts I've bought. And I only got into them two years ago. I know I've spent at least 1500 just from Hank alone, and that was like a year ago that I counted. Although my C10 has taken a lot of my money too, I still have four other trucks I have to work on, and one at least I gotta keep running. Story 34 books. I have over 1,000 texts ranging from topics such as art, alchemy, the occult, paranormal, cryptozoology, and folklore. Most are out of print and considerably rare. The rarest book I had was from the 1300s and was a Latin text on demonology. I can't remember the exact name. I acquired it for less than 100 pounds and sold it for 25,000 pounds because I didn't have the means to ensure the text's survival. 
it's in a climate-controlled room now. And to me, it was more important that it lasts another 700 years than I be, its sole owner. I have insane luck when it comes to finding books at great prices. Like a pig sniffling for truffles, my nose guides me into charity stores or second-hand dealers, and I come out with literary pearls of wisdom. I've spent a few thousand on my collection, and at its last valuation, it was worth a little over 100,000 pounds. Story 35. I always say my hobby is collecting craft supplies. I have a tendency to start or plan something and not finish it. The positive is I know how to make, do many things, and mostly pretty well. The negative is that I have a ton of expensive craft supplies that take up a lot of room, not fun when moving. I have been consistently crocheting for 10 months now. On that note, I have enough yarn and purchase patterns to keep me busy for months. See, the overpurchasing trend. ADHD is a struggle. Story 36, art. I had so much canvas that I caught on sale that when deciding to paint every canvas I had by the end of the year in Novern, 2023, that ended up being 90, and I technically still didn't use all of them because I found 20 more behind the couch while I documented my journey on YouTube. I started selling my art because I was making way too much of it, but unfortunately nobody is buying it at these art fairs I'm doing, so I'm stuck with over 150 paintings right now. Story 37. Now I'm married with kids, so they're all quite cheap hobbies. But in my youth, when I was single, I skydived and I raced SCCA Touring, a modded CRX. They weren't mega expensive hobbies, but I was also young and not making so much moolah. A friend moved up to Formula Atlantic, and after I raced his car a few times was smitten and came this close to going that route too, but the cost was more than I was willing to swallow, so I never bought my own. Story 38. Working out, getting dressed for the gym, then lifting weights, stretching a little cardio sometimes day in and day out, then taking a shower and getting ready takes me upwards of three hours. Also, if you are serious about fitness, then counting your macros consuming, right amount of supplements prioritizing your sleep and recovery adds to the time as well. Some days when I don't do any of this, I feel I have so much time in the day. Story 39. I dropped the one that was adding up fast, record collecting. I mainly focus on collecting Blu-rays and DVDs now. DVDs are great. I can get them for pocket change now. Blu-rays, it's hit and miss. Some used ones are as cheap as used DVDs, some not so much. I wish I'd made the upgrade to a Blu-ray player way earlier. Story 40. Irish Dancing. I'm trying to find a decent human being for a teacher who doesn't charge a fortune, is fine with sped adult humans stupidly trying to sit exams in the subject, and who won't ghost said adult for being itself. Clarinet too. Again, need to find a reputable teacher who puts as much emphasis on theory as on practical.